Did you catch that? Our sense of reality has less to do with what's happening out there and more to do with what's happening in there. And here's the other thing I would tell you. Our sense of reality has a lot to do with what's happening in our hearts. And so, But before we go any further, uh, Kay and William Johnson, I thought I saw you guys back here, our newest members. I thought I did this already, but we're going to do it again if I did. Could you pass this over to them. We are, we are glad to have you guys. I tell people all the time, the people at our church are awesome. We're still working on the pastor. <laughs> His driving's not saved yet, I heard. They're still praying. Jesus, you got most of him, but you didn't get his driving yet. There's actually a verse in the Bible that says he drives like a wild man, like one of Jehu's servants. And I thought, that's me. That's perfect. You got one of these for hurricane season? <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, I hope you do. I hope you got a few of these. Uh, I needed a light last night, and I had left this at church. I got home, and my septic system backed up, so I got to go out. Yeah, I love that noise you just made. It's okay, I fixed it. But I needed to find a flashlight, and I said, oh, I wish I had my little light that I left at church last night. Here's the thing about life. It doesn't take much light to light up a dark area. And I just needed a little light, and everything was fixed really quick. So last night, Ricky's talking about going out of town this week, and they were talking about where they were going. And as I look at the map, I saw Linville Caverns. How many of you have ever been to Linville Caverns? If you've never been to Linville Caverns, I'm just going to give you just a taste of the treat. There are pictures of my parents at Linville Caverns. There's pictures of my grandparents at Linville Caverns. And there's pictures of me at Linville Caverns. And Linville Caverns, just in North Carolina, is just a a small cavern. It stays about 50-something degrees year-round, and uh, they got bats in there, and I don't know, and it's, it's a tour. And you go in there, and because there's not a lot, every time I've been, they have the slowest country person in the world give the tours. I think, I think that they give the person slow pills like they give me fast pills. And you go in there, and they'll say, Welcome to Linville Caverns. (laughs) It's 54 degrees all year here. I'm actually doing it faster than they did, just to be honest with you. As awkward as you felt, you feel like it's a joke when you go there. You're thinking, this is a joke, right? At what point does the person start talking like a normal... No, no. 30 minutes of this. Here is the wedding stalactite. That's the flashlight. Why do you think they call it? A wedding stalactite. People yell out. They look around for 10 minutes. It's unbelievable. It literally is the slow thing. But when you go, they get you to the back of the cavern. And they do this every single time. And they want you to know what it's like when there's no lights. So they take you to the back and they turn off the lights. And then they'll tell you to put your hand in front of your face and wave it around. So, of course, you do that, and then they turn on the lights so that everybody's doing this when they turn on the ha, ha, ha. Yeah, that's country people humor. It's not that funny. But what's amazing is when they turn off the lights, it literally is so dark, it's beyond dark. I don't know how to explain darkness like that. It's like hurricane season with the lights out. I mean, it's bad. And here's what's amazing. When they do it, typically, they'll show you what it's like to have a lantern back in coal miners' day. And what's surprising is just a little lantern with a little light. All of a sudden, you can see everything, especially when you went from darkness to that light. Now, here's the things about blessings. When you get around someone who's a blessing... Our world is so dark 
that even just a little bit of blessing coming out of someone's mouth, even a little bit of encouragement, even a little bit of somebody who doesn't curse you is amazing. And today we're going to look at this idea of, of 1 Samuel chapter 25 of when your motives are questioned. And here's the thing about this story. I love this story, but I don't have time to tell the whole thing. So please go home, or even while I'm talking and you're bored, read the rest of 1 Samuel 25. It is a, um, an amazing story, and, and I struggle with this, but here it is. The reason that other people question our motives sometimes is because of their selfishness. And sometimes it's because they've been hurt. And the enemy even plants thoughts in their head, but here's the other side of that. It's true for you too. You and I sometimes judge the motives of others incorrectly. And sometimes that's because of our hurt. Sometimes the reason we curse other people is because we were cursed as kids. We had a parent who called us dummy or stupid or foolish or whatever other word, maybe even worse words they called us, maybe lazy, maybe useless, maybe even worse than that. And so sometimes because we're carrying that, we pour that out on other people. And I think that's what happened in this story we're going to look at today. Others have the same problems that we have, and when they judge us incorrectly, it's easy to get frustrated, but then we also need to recognize that we do the same thing. So today I want to look at these three things. Some will curse you, some will bless you, and God will grow you. Now, I called this sermon, When Others Question Your Motives, my alternate title is, Why Husbands Should Listen to Their Wives. And you're going to see why in just a minute. This guy needed to listen to his wife, and he didn't. And he dies at the end of the story because he didn't listen to his wife. And then maybe you could say because he listened to his wife. But that's another story for another day. So here we go. We're going to pick up the story with some will curse you. So we're going to pick up the story starting in uh, verse 3, and then we'll skip up to 9 to just get some of the story out of the way. Like I said, read it on your own. It's a great story. So it's talking about this guy. They go to visit him. Basically, David's men are hungry. They've been running from Saul. Remember, Saul tried to kill David over and over with a spear. We're up to three times now that David's had a spear thrown at him. I want to give you my advice from a few weeks ago. After the first time a spear is thrown at you, you don't have to go back. Just write that down. That's great wisdom from Scripture. So here's David and his men. They're out. They're hungry. They've been protecting this guy's flocks, and they basically want some food. So let's find out about this dude. His name was Nabal. Now, before I go any further, you need to know that this name means fool. We might say this name means dummy. So if you were Fred Samford, what did he always call his son? Big dummy. Big dummy all the time. By the way, I forgot about the big till you just said it. All right. So he called him big dummy all the time. Some of us grew up in homes where we were called dummy. But thank God, that's not your actual name legally. His parents, while pregnant, were discussing names. And the dad said, you know what? He's going to be like my side. Let's just call him dummy and get it over with. So all his life, everywhere he goes... Dummy, dummy, dummy. Hey, dummy. This is his legal... He has to sign checks. Dummy. His name was Nabal, and his wife's name was Abigail. She, listen to this, she was intelligent and a beautiful woman. So just imagine Kristen, my wife, and then you're good. All right. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting points. Just be quiet, all right? All right. He was a Calebite. Now, let me tell you why this is important. This means that he's related to David. He's one of David's cousins. He would have heard about all the comings and goings of David. He would have known about the anointing by Samuel years before to be king. He would know about spears being thrown at him. 
He would know what's going on, <laughs> but he wants to live up to his name. When David's men arrived, they gave Nabal this message in David's name. Then they waited. And basically they were asking, hey, could you feed us? Could you help us out? We've been helping you out. Could you help us out? Nabal answers David's servant, who is this David? Oh, uh, your cousin? Who is this son of Jesse? By the way, isn't it funny he doesn't know who he is, but he knows his dad? Not a smart guy. His logic doesn't even make logical sense. Who's David? Who is this son of Jesse? Like, I know his dad, and I know who David's related to, but I don't know him. This logic is hurting my head. I feel like I'm in a debate with Cecilian when life is on the line. Here we go. Death is on the line. Many servants are breaking away from their masters these days. Why should I take my bread and water and the meat I have slaughtered for my shearers and give it to men coming from who knows where? So he basically insults a military troop who's been helping him, who's related to him. He not only says, who is he? He says, you guys are just runaway slaves. You're just taking off from your master. You guys are liars. Now, have you ever had somebody call you a liar? Have you ever worked for a boss that just didn't like you? David knew what that was like. You ever have somebody who literally says to you, I think you're lying? Now, one thing I've learned in life over all my years, I'm getting old now. Let me teach you guys a lesson that you can know this. Once somebody looks at you and says that you're a liar, if you're not lying, you might as well stop talking to them. You're wasting your time. Because at that point, anything you can say can and will be held against you. My dad used to say this, don't wrestle with a pig. You both get dirty, but the pig likes it. How many of you have heard that before? Thank you, fellow hillbillies. <laughs> Last night, I said to, I said to the, the group, how many of you have heard this? Some people raised their hand. I noticed in the back, my mom was sitting there with her hand down. I stopped church and said, mom, you've never heard that? Nope. <laughs> and then I realized there's a lot of words my mother never heard out of my dad that I heard out of my dad. My sister and I know his favorite word. My mom had never heard it. It has four letters. And so I said, you hadn't heard that? She said, no, I've never heard that. I said, well, I'm more country than I thought. If you wrestle with a pig, you both get dirty, but the pig likes it. Listen, if you argue with a fool, You'll both get angry, you'll both get frustrated, but the fool likes it. When you're dealing with somebody who's full of curses, sometimes the best thing you can do is not engage with them. Sometimes the best thing you can do is not be a part, and especially those of you who are fighting on Facebook. You know that there's people who are typing things just to aggravate others. They're not, they don't believe what they're saying sometimes. They're just doing it to aggravate you. By the way, one of the things we've proven in the last few years is some of the people on TV that are stating positions, when their emails came out, they didn't believe the positions they were stating. Why? Because they're just doing it to make money. Shocker. Why would you fight with that person? Why would you engage with that person? And yet it's human nature, even when somebody calls us a liar, to think I've got to defend myself. These men just go back to David, and David thinks, fine, I'll take care of it. We're just going to kill everybody. How's that for a nice conversation? You ever had somebody judge your motives wrong? Listen to this. Luke 6, 27, 28, but to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. And this is one of the reasons that I always say, when you read the Old Testament, read the Old Testament in light of the New Testament. David's reaction was not like this. 
David said, fine, they don't want to give us food. Let's just kill them all and take it ourselves. How's that for not blessing those who curse you? Now, I don't know if you've ever misjudged somebody. I had my niece whose special needs over my house just recently, and I had made a big cup of coffee, not uncommon, to come to my house and see me making a cup of coffee. I call it Ridlin. And so I'm drinking a cup of coffee. I set my coffee down. I go and I'm doing something else. I go back to my coffee and it's empty. And I immediately thought I have drank that entire cup of coffee and forgot. And so out loud I said, huh, I must have drank my coffee. And my niece's dad says, nope. Dana loves to do that. She goes around and carries a cup with her everywhere, and if you leave a drink down, she just pours it in her drink. Man, she enjoyed some good coffee that day. She was just going around. Anybody drop something, she just pour it in, drink it herself. That's awesome. So later that day, I had had my headphones on the desk. I went over, and my headphones are gone. Now, I'm getting old, so I'm getting smarter. So I texted Dana's mom and I said, hey, I don't know if I just lost them or if Dana picked them up, but if you see a set of headphones, mine are missing. But I probably just misplaced them. About an hour later, it's always an hour later, I was walking around the house and they were exactly where I left them, not where I left them before. And I had to write her mom back and go, sorry. But thankfully, I didn't write, she took my headphones. Why? Because I'm old. When I was young, I would have written, who took my headphones? You ever yell at everybody for taking your keys at the house? Worst is when you find them in your pocket after doing that. Who took my keys? We didn't take your keys, Dad. Yes, you kids did. You are always moving my keys at... Oh. We love to look at other people and say, I would never judge somebody's motives. But the truth is, we all do that. And the truth is, just like Mr. Fool, we can all be Mr. Fool sometimes. Kristen's reminding me all the time, since my driving's not saved yet, that those other people, Eric, are not doing what they're doing on purpose in those other cars. That guy who just cut you off, he just didn't see you. To which I say, oh no, he did it on purpose. I'm judging their motives. I do it all the time. If you're in the left lane on I-95, I've judged you harshly. I'm sorry. <laughs> Rick Warren says this, Jesus wants you to believe in others too and express to them the potential you see in them to do great things for God. Let me tell you something about my mom. I would get a report card and come home. Can I tell you my report cards in high school were not the best? And by not the best, I mean bad. And my mom would say, you know, Eric, you can do anything you want to do. She would say that over and over. And so when I went to college, I got mostly A's and some B's. When I went for my master's degree, I got almost all A's. When I did my doctorate, I got all A's. Because I could hear in my head my mom saying, you can do everything that you want to do. And I believed it. Nobody said, Eric, you're too ADD to study. That was probably true. But I learned how to. And the truth is, we need to tell people, especially our children and grandchildren and the neighbor's kids and our nephews and nieces, hey, this is what I see in you. You can do what you're called to do. Number two, some will bless you. Now, my dad was not perfect. For those of you who don't know, my dad was probably at least manic, maybe schizophrenic, maybe bipolar. We don't really know, but he didn't always say the nicest things. He could be very hateful sometimes. And when I met Kristen's dad, the first thing he did was poke me in the stomach and say, you're not healthy enough to date my daughter. What's bad is I've gained weight since then. <laughs> but it wasn't too many months later that he said to me, 
you know what? I don't know what your dad was like, but if it's okay with you, I'd like to be your dad too. Right? Now, I don't know what kind of dad you had. I don't know what kind of mom you had. They may have cursed you. They may have blessed you, but you have a heavenly father who wants to bless you. So Mr. Fool, Nabal, did not get it right. So they come, the, the, some of her, uh, the servants came to his wife, Abigail, and said to her, Hey, this is bad. This is what your husband said. And she said, Don't say anything to him. I'll take care of it. 1 Samuel 25, we pick up the story. By the way, this is according to one of the commentaries, the most remarkable female-initiated encounters in the Old Testament. When Abigail saw David, she quickly got off her donkey and bowed down before David with her face to the ground. A few verses later, and she says, Let this gift which your servant has brought to my Lord be given to the men who follow you. Please forgive your servant's presumptions. The Lord your God will certainly make a lasting dynasty for my Lord because you fight the Lord battles and no wrongdoing will be found in you as long as you live. She did not ask her husband. He was having a party, by the way. She did not go to him and say, what do I need to do, honey? She actually knew that he lived up to his name. She says that later. And so what did she do? She did what was best for her family. Let me tell you something. Ladies, if your husband is not following God, if your boyfriend's not following God, well, if your boyfriend's not following God, you probably need a new boyfriend. But, but if your husband's not following God or he's walked away from God, that doesn't mean you have to walk away from God. You are allowed, not only allowed, you should be faithful even when the other people in your life are not. This is a story of a woman who saw what her husband did and said, Oh no. And because of her action, she saved the whole family. Because she did what was right when nobody else did. And this was unheard of in its day. It's another one of those instances where the Bible is way ahead of what was going on in society at that time. And this woman is shown to be the wise one, why her husband was shown to be the fool. Now, if you've been in church long enough, you know that looks similar to my marriage. Now, here's... (laughs) It's true. Have you not heard my stories up? Where have they been for all these stories? Do you have somebody in your life who can encourage you? I'll never forget when I first became a full-time youth pastor. I was so discouraged so often. It's just hard to work with youth in general, but there were discouraging moments and discouraging times. And and for the first time in my life, I was required to go to deacon's meetings, which were unbelievable at that time. And I was just discouraged. And I remember I would go in fellowship with these youth pastors, and there was one named Colin, a good friend who became a good friend of mine. And Colin, every week, would encourage me in some way or another. He'd either tell me something that was going on, or he would point out something that was good. And he would just encourage me, and I started calling him my Barnabas. Because in dark times and on dark days, it was like coming into a light every single time I was near him. Can I encourage you? Get somebody in your life who can be that light for you. Get somebody in your life who can be a blessing to you. Get around people that are like that. But time out. You be that person too. Evaluate the words that you say. Evaluate the way that you make others feel. Evaluate the things that you say to others all through your life. And say to God, God, would you make me very aware of my words and help me to bless and not curse. Luke 24 shows how important blessing was to Jesus. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken into heaven. Now, I don't know about you, but I think the last thing Jesus did before he left earth was was pretty important. The last thing before you leave a babysitter with your kids is pretty important. The last things that you would tell somebody are pretty important. And what was Jesus doing? He was blessing them. 
do you realize that God is the God of blessing? And the only reason that you and I can bless others is because God pours blessing into us. Some of you may not have taken enough time to get still lately to let God bless you. Maybe lately you've been so busy getting on Twitter and Facebook and threads. I'm trying to think of what else is out there. TikTok, paddywhack, give your dog a bone. We're so busy getting on all these other things that we haven't spent time in the Bible. What Rodney was talking about with Proverbs, you can read a proverb a day. There's 31, just read one a day. Spend some time in God's Word, not just reading it and letting it flow through, but letting God pour His blessing into you. Why? So that when you go out, suddenly you're a light in a dark world. The world is angry and hateful and fearful. I'm telling you, you can make a list. Every week, the world, the news is giving you something different to be mad or fearful about. And depending on what news station you watch, you get a different list. But you're mad and angry about something this week. Why? Because you're supposed to be. Because they sell commercials by you being mad and angry. But it doesn't help you to be a blessing to other people by you being mad and angry. You never hear about Jesus walking around. Jesus was angry as he walked around. That's why everybody was calling out to him. Number three, God will grow you. In youth ministry, one of the things I learned to do over the years was to begin to bless my students, but not just that. I taught them to bless each other. One of my favorite activities was handing out a piece of paper, and I would say to the kids, get them in a circle, hand out a piece of paper. And I've done this with small groups too. Hand out a piece of paper, say, write your name on the top of the paper. Now pass it to your left. They'd pass it to their left, and I'd say, now write something down that you like about that person. I've had people tell me that they still have those lists from years and years ago where somebody wrote down what they liked about them during a very hard time in their lives. Do you have anybody who can do that? Are you doing that for anyone else? 1 Samuel 25, 37 continues, Then in the morning, when the ball was sober, how's that for a sentence? His wife told him all these things, and his heart failed him, and it became like a stone. Most people believe he had a stroke. Because he found out I was going to die. My wife saved my life. And then she told me this and killed me. That's, that's really what happens here. About ten days later, the Lord struck Nabal and he died. When David heard that Nabal was dead, he said, Praise be to the Lord who upheld my cause against Nabal for treating me with contempt. He's kept his servant from doing wrong and has brought Nabal's wrongdoing down on his head. That was David's way of saying, Karma! Before there was karma, there was karma. Now, obviously, he had not read about blessing those who curse you yet. But the truth was, he saw that God was taking care of him on his journey to become king. But he not only was taking care of David, he was taking care of Abigail. Then David sent word to Abigail, who once again, he would be a kinsman redeemer for her, asking her to become his wife. So not only did Abigail's wisdom keep her from being killed with everybody else and keeping all the people from dying, it also blessed her. Do you realize when you bless other people, it also blesses you? Do you realize if you will learn how to bless instead of curse, that not only will you bless the people around you, but you will find that your life is more filled with joy and peace as you recognize, you know what? I could say that negative thing right now, but it's not going to help anybody. So instead, I'm going to speak words of blessing. She knew what to say at the right time. That's why she's considered wise. Ask God to begin to give you wisdom to grow you and be able to say the right thing at the right time. 2 Corinthians 9.8 God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all you need, you will abound in every good work. When my father-in-law was very sick, he was in a hospital bed on oxygen, had a hard time breathing. And I have a picture of him sitting there, oxygen mask on, the little hospital table. And there he is with a pen and a piece of paper. 
and he's writing thank you notes and notes of encouragement to all of the doctors and all of the nurses, thanking them for taking care of him. I know some of you are going through a hard time. I know some of you are struggling, whether it's with health, physical health, mental health. But even during those times, can I tell you something? You can still be a blessing. Even in the middle of those times, you don't have to pronounce curses. Even though you might feel like it, you don't have to act on your feelings. You can still bless those around you. Kristen told me that some of those nurses still have those notes from her dad. Years later. You never know how your words are going to impact somebody, not weeks or months, but even years, and maybe even generations later than you realize. Be a blessing. If you're here today and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, that's the first step to receiving His love and walking in His power. If you've never surrendered your life to Him, you can do that today. I'd love to talk to you after the service about what it means to recognize that Jesus died for your sins, died on a cross, rose again, so that when we surrender our lives to Him, we exchange our sin for His righteousness. If you want to do that today, I'd love to talk to you after the service. Maybe you're here today and you've given your life to Christ, but you've never been baptized. Hey, we're going to baptize this afternoon. Feel free to come and tell me after, hey, I want to get baptized today. I'd be glad to make you a part. Maybe as a Christian, you're here today and you even got in a fight on the way to church. <clears throat> Might be time to say some words of apology and start saying some words of blessing. Let's close in prayer today. Would you join me? Father, thank you for this time today. I pray that you'd bless each one. Help us to be light in a dark world. Lord, may we be like Abigail and not be like the fool. May we be the ones who are speaking words of encouragement and blessing to others, even on dark days, even on days we struggle. I pray that we would have words of blessing for you and be able to pour those blessings on others. Bless each one here today. In Jesus' name, amen.